thank you so much. That gets us to, we have a shorter meeting today as we have several members of our team that are out of town for professional development at Harvard. And so that moves us quickly into public participation. Historically, those members have time after the director's report to have a discussion. Um, so I hope that all those that have signed up are in attendance. Let's get to our public participation, if we can have that list up. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, the board will hear from these persons who have requested to speak to the board. Currently, these board mem these uh, members of the public and stakeholders have three minutes to speak. At the end of three minutes, you will hear this bell. Thank you so much. You may possibly also hear a new bell that was revealed to us at the last meeting. If that happens, we apologize. It is a little alarming, but it does stop at three minutes. Um, so first we have Susie Wilcox. Thank you so much. Good evening, or good, good afternoon. Um, my name is Susie Wilcox, and I'm here as a member of NOAA, Nashville Organized for Action and Hope, and as a retired teacher and administrator. And I do want to preface my remarks, given what's just occurred in the government's committee, I would like for you to think of this as more of a validation of what you have done and what you do. So my focus this afternoon will be in supporting a path forward which accommodates the board and offers other concerned citizens an easy and accessible access to present their concerns and worries. You have demonstrated your support and willingness to go a step further to support children in public education by running campaigns and being elected. You have shown that you want to be an ally to children as they strive toward a better future to parents who want to provide the supports to their children, to teachers and principals who look to you for guidance, and to the government leaders who depend on you to represent those groups. To be effective in that role, you as elected leaders want to be aware and understand the everyday concerns of those you serve, the worries about programs and supports that come and go, the tedious fiduciary concerns that guide our local schools, and the effect that changes in programs or supports activate. Parents send their children to school every day, hoping that all is well and well thought out programs and supports are offered for their children. When parents need to share concerns with you, their elected leaders, they need to be welcomed. This role you have taken on is challenging to say the least. Everyone wants their problem solved in the way that makes them happy. An impossible task to say the least, but it requires you to be knowledgeable and transparent in the manner that you operate. We in NOAA realize that to work alongside others, you first need to listen and to be able to understand the issues before you can cooperatively work together on the solutions. It is easy to allow the public to share, is it easy for the public to share the concerns with the board? Not at all. I understand the dauntingness of that request. It requires guidelines and clear expectations to keep comments brief, organized, and focused before the school board can address these challenges and move forward to further strengthen the parent community school board connection. So again, I just like to think of it as a validation for all the work that you've done. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next we have Sarah. Okay. After that we have Sophia, Sophia Rose. I don't see Sophia. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for those members that have signed up. Um, I appreciate it. All right, that brings us to our governance issues. Let me make sure you can hear me through the microphone as we have people that are attending virtually. That gets us to our governance issues. We adopted the agenda with the removal of 1E. If there's a, no objection to that, these items will be adopted. Of course, besides 1E. Any objections? Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry. Um, can I, I would just like to ask um, one question about B2 and B7. B2. And it can be the same question for both. It's their both. Be yes. Okay. So Abigail would like to remove consent agenda 1B2 and 1B7. So I would need a motion so for moved. the consent agenda X2, 1B7, and 1E. So moved. 
Thank you. So good. All right, it's been first and seconded. Any discussion about that agenda as is? With those things removed. All right, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All right, that's unanimous. All right, that gets us to, and um, to make sure I'm correct, Member Tyler, mm -hmm. you want to you want to refer to two and seven at the same time. Yes. Okay. Let's do one B two and one B seven. Uh, may I have a motion? A motion to approve. Seconded. Do you have a second? Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's have that discussion on one B two and one B seven. So these are our um, janitorial groups. Oh, I'm sorry. You may. Thank oh, you for checking. Yeah. Um, these are um, our two janitorial facilities, and it looks like we're giving them another three-year contract. And I went through all of their contracts today, um, earlier, and I just wanted to, I had been told previously that we had written into the contracts that there would be certain checks on on making sure that they're meeting their obligations and that they're they're doing um, what they're supposed to be doing. I think that at one point I'd been told that there were supposed to be um, monthly meetings that we would be having with them to ensure that they're being met. Um, but I didn't see those in here. So I just wanted to ask about how are we ensuring that they are meeting the required cleanliness standards of our schools and to what we know our teachers and students deserve. If, if, if we're not, I didn't see anything in here about, um, we had talked about potential sanctions if they're not meeting it. Um, and I didn't see anything in here about, uh, I know in Memphis they have a sanction about a certain amount of money for every school that's not met to a certain standard. Um, we don't have anything like that in any of the ones that I read. Um, I, I know that we do have the ability to take away the entire contract, um, but there's no in between of this is not being met at a level for these schools. We need to put you on some sort of, you know, we need to get some sort of plan in place to ensure that the needs of the kids and the teachers and the staff at this school are being met and the standards are being maintained in a way that they have soap every day, that they have the basic materials they need, that they have paper towels to dry their hands with, that their trash is being emptied at the end of the day every single day, not just once a week or whenever somebody gets around to it. Um, I know that the only mechanism that we have had in place has been that the principals do a score, a monthly score, and then we can track that over time. But I was told that we were going to be putting something in there that would be more sanction-like of if it's not meeting this, then here's the plan you'll be put put in place. I did not see that in these contracts. Okay, Dr. Battle, I turn this over to you. Thank you, Chair Erod. <clears throat> um, as uh, Chief um, Sullivan is approaching the podium, she might have some additional information to share. Um, I think um, we are all aware that it's not a tip, it's not typical for us to include that information into our contracting documents. Um, that's not something we do for any of our contractors. But um, Chief Sullivan, you can uh, speak specifically around the measures that um, are in place with regards to um, our school communications, our feedback um, cards, um, as well as meetings and follow up um, with our contractors. Thank you, Dr. Battle. Um, that is correct. We don't put that information in our in our contracts. But what we have done is um, right now with the school with the scorecards that we are using at each school, and that's why it's so important that we get this information back. We don't just review it over time. We review it. This allows us to really review information in almost real time. Um, we're trying to get to real time, but um, but we're uh, we're looking at that. As soon as we get the scorecards in, then we have follow-up meetings with each vendor and the supervisors for each area within that vendor group. So we're um, getting, we're being able, we are that way able to drill down to the actual, almost the school level for those vendors for a group that are over that, that group of schools. And uh, then we have that conversation immediately and then they work with the school, the supervisor does, and with those um, 
with uh, the custodians who are on staff for them to make improvements if needed and to um, celebrate where things are going well. Um, so we, we have overall, um, our scores are uh, higher than they are lower. So we, are have, we do have more to celebrate than we have to correct. And our work with the two vendors has been very positive towards when we need to make corrections, they're very willing to do that. And that includes changing staffing sometimes and, um, and changing policies and procedures that they have. And so our, our experience has been good with them for that um, in that case. And um, as, as uh, the pandemic-related um, issues um, around the supply chain have lessened, we've also been able to have more supplies readily available. And that, I believe, has also helped that um, the issues around uh, soap and, um, and paper towels, et cetera. So I feel like we're in a much better place with that as well. I know that by state law, we're not allowed to require a, a minimum wage for a private company to have for theirs. Um, but I do see that we are approving a 4% price increase. Um, I know that the original contract had a 3%. And so this is a little bit beyond, and I'm sure some of that is because of inflation in general. Um, but uh, do we have any sense where that extra 4% is going to? Do we have any mechanism in place to ensure that the people who are in our schools with our students every single day will be the beneficiary of some of that? We do. We've had conversations with both vendors, and they've both um, told us that, you know, what amount will go down to the employees. And, and they... They both are advocating for higher wages for their staff, which would be higher wages, higher contracted amounts for us. But um, but they have said that there are increases for supplies, there are increases for um, you know for insurance, et cetera, things that go along with. But the majority of this increase goes towards staffing, which is salaries. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, have we ever considered allowing our teachers themselves to fill out the scorecard, or has that always just been principals only? We have talked about having teachers um, fill out those scorecards as well, and I'm going to pause for Dr. Battle to respond because we've had that conversation as well. So um, just for clarity, the purpose, the, the process is that the staff, the, all the educators, including our teachers and our support staff, provide the information and feedback that the principals collect in order to fill out the, the scorecard. So as a previous city principal myself, uh, we had a pretty um, um, efficient process by which we collected any feedback from um, our team and we use that information to fill out the scorecard itself. It would be nearly impossible with the number of employees we have to have efficiencies around individual comments, mm -hmm. but the principals um, collect that information from our educators and teachers who are the ones who have the direct um, information um, about any needs um, within their particular classroom space or office space. So everyone is a part of the process. We just ask for the point person um, and, and one per, point person in the school to share that feedback on behalf of their school community. That makes sense. Thank you. And Dr. Battle, if I could just um, add on to that, Dr. Battle has shared some really great best practices with several schools around having um, a lead on each hallway that then brings that information together. Um, some have a, a clipboard in a hallway. Some have used um, a electronic means to collect it for that hallway and then shared um, with the principal or the assistant principal who is leading that. So that's... Um, you know, each school, you know, work, what works for them, but she has shared different best, best practices whenever we have that conversation with principals. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think, and I, I want to make it clear that my support of our custodial staff is as high as I can make it because I'm, Every time I went into a new school, the people that I wanted to be friends with were the custodial staff and the front office staff because that's where the business got done. And um, 
the kids love the janitors at, at the elementary school level, and they know who they are. They call them by name. They form friendships and relationships with them. And we need to take care of the people that are taking care of our students. So that is my intent with bringing this up, to ensure that we are doing everything within the law that lets us take care of the people who are taking care of our schools and our students and teachers and keeping it clean. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other discussion? All right, we have a motion that has been first and seconded to approve 1B2 and 1B7. All those in favor of approving 1B2 and 1B7 after this discussion, please raise your hand. All right, that's everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for those questions. All right, that gets us to 1E. So I need a motion to remove 1E from the consent agenda. Sorry, we already did. So we need just a discussion. I motion apologize. to approve. E1. E1. 1E. E. Sorry. E. So we have a motion to approve. I'll second it. So let's have discussion. Um, so I just pulled off the... Uh, the consent agenda just for transparency uh, last meeting we presented this uh, our our budget presentation this is the first step in a multi-step process um, the continuity of operation has a roughly 5.2 um, inflationary increase which is roughly 1.268 billion dollars um, and so what we are doing is presenting this uh, this presentation to the mayor for it to be filed into um, his overall budget um, and then it will move on to Metro Council. There will be a budget hearing um, that is yet to be set um, for us to have to go in front of the budget committee to present to present this along with the um, the amount that the mayor deems uh, he allotted in his overall budget um, and then it will come back to us after council approves it and then we will have the actual line by line item once we get a final um final and definite um allocation from the mayor um and so i just want to make sure we do this as we we go on just to show this is at we're at the very beginning of the process only part one of a basically three part process um and then also i also want to put on to the public's radar, um, according to state law, we are required to have um, over 20 hours of professional development, unlike any other elected officials. We are in early conversations with um, with our counterparts at the Metro Council to um, have um, some funding go to that since we are very unique in that order um, and uh, making sure there's enough resources to meet the requirement that we are doing state law. So as those conversations happen in public, as you hear those things, I want to make the public know that that is the reason for some of these conversations. And we're also looking into an overall um, comparison of our compensation along with other school boards um, across the state too as we begin the process as we are going through attrition. So I wanted to have that initial conversation um, with the community about that. But as I said, this is the very first part, in the very beginning. Um, we'll, we will send this to Mayor O'Connell. After that part, he will follow the state of Metro budget. Then it will go on to council. Council will um, approve the mayor's budget with amendments they do seem fit or with the uh, budget chair substitute budget and then it will come back to us then we will have a line item budget that we will discuss and review and then we will vote on it so i just want to bring that to people's attention um, as we approve the first step of the process all right seeing no other discussion all those in favor of passing one e please raise your hand all right that's everyone as well. Thank you so much for helping us go through our governance issues. That gets us to board reports. We had um, one committee meeting before this meeting, and so I will turn it over to Emily Masters, who chairs governance committee. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we went over the new version of the proposed public participation policy, um, which we had um, we'd gone into recess two weeks ago during the governance committee so that we could revisit this. Um, there was one friendly amendment made to the policy as proposed, and then it passed um, as part of the consent agenda this evening. So um, that will soon be up 
online along with all of our other policies which are accessible through the um, TSBA portal. All right. That gets us to our announcement. So um, District 1 has no announcements. So that gets us to District 3. I just, I just want to say, um, hang in there, kids. <laughs> I feel like it, there's, just, I'm seeing a lot of sort of like frantic, stressed out kids. It's sort of that time when they'd really rather be outside, and but they're having to kind of wrap it all up. And yes, I might be seeing a little bit of this in my own house. So, um, just want to say, you know. You're in the home stretch, teachers too. We can do this. We're going to finish out the semester strong, finish out this final quarter strong, and um, just appreciate the work that everyone's doing. Yeah. District 4. Uh, no. no, you have to click it. A uh, couple of things I just want to um, uplift. Uh, this past weekend, um, TK Fain, board member Fain, and I were able to participate um, uh, both as a judge and the announcer for the Scripps Regional Spelling Bee at the Tennessee Titans Stadium. Um, I will say it was an eventful um, spelling bee. Uh, where we came out with a nice winner who will go on to um, serve in the National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. It was a very good experience, um, and we learned a lot through the process. Um, we do want to gloat a bit to Miss um, Board Member Mays that we got Titans um, bracelets <laughs> that we forgot to wear today, but we are going to wear, but we just wanted to bring that to your attention since you're a Titans fan, um, <laughs> just to bring that up. Secondly, I, I do want to uplift uh, DuPont Hadley Middle School um, and their partnership with the Old Hickory Chamber this weekend. Um, they had a very nice festival for the community, um, very nice event out there, and um, it really brought the community together. Um, for that event. So I want to thank DuPont Hadley um, and the Old Hickory Chamber for partnering um, to bring in our community to learn more about our schools and the work we do. Um, uh, another thing is uh, McGavick High School uh, will have a upcoming play um, with it's uh, Matilda. Uh, so, uh, Matilda the Musical, that will happen starting April 11th, which is also my daughter's 31st birthday. Woohoo! Um, and so, they will have plays uh, April 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. So, if you guys want to see Matilda the Musical, please come out to McGavick High School and join them and support the students um, in that. Also, last but not least, I do want to wish um, those in our Muslim community an Eid Mubarak. Our holiday, the last day of fasting is today, and our holiday is tomorrow. So I want to wish everyone who has participated in the fast um, happy holidays, um, and you guys um, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. District 5. <laughs> It's your first time speaking. It is. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to give. After that. Oh, God. <laughs> I wanted to give uh, kudos and shout out to Percon. They had a I Have a Future program last week. Um, I had to leave the uh, Teachers Awards to go to that. And um, those babies really showed out. Jones had like a fashion show and they danced. And then my. My son and a few other football members had their choir de debut. Um, they did really, really well. Um, great program. I hope to see it again um, for the next upcoming years. And that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thanks. District 6. Well done, TK. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I just have a few announcements here. So 
On uh, this Thursday, April 11th, there will be a multi-council community meeting at Cane Ridge High School, which will include districts 8, 12, 13, 28, 29, 31, 32, 33, and at-large council members. That meeting will be from 6 to 8 p.m. in the auditorium at Cane Ridge High School. And I encourage anybody who wants to get updates on what's happening in Metro Council to show up at that meeting. I will certainly see you there. Also, on April 16th, I will hold my next District 6 community meeting. That will be at the Southeast Branch Library in the large community room. It will be from 6.30 to 7.30, and we will discuss AI in education, and we will talk about the new proposed elementary school plan for Antioch. So definitely want to have as many of you who are interested in those topics to come out. Um, on April 30th, just as a reminder, it's the deadline for students, rising juniors, to sign up or to submit applications to become the next student school board member. Um, again, that deadline is 5 p.m. on April 30th. Go ahead and get those applications in. The applications are available on the MNPS website. We'd love to see that number of applications grow. Um, and um, I saw this today, and I was super excited about this. Uh, TSSAA uh, has just officially sanctioned Tennessee as the 10th state to have to officially sanction girls flag football as a high school varsity sport. So that is huge. So all of our girls football uh, players, yay y'all. <laughs> and finally, a big shout out to the women in government at Vanderbilt University for inviting uh, board member Peters, player, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I got stuck. It's, 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 it's all good. Board member player and uh, board member O'Hara Block, myself, and council lady um, Vo to a panel discussion this weekend. It was actually really interesting. Uh, those young ladies are really interested in what's happening in, in government in the state, and hopefully, we have put the uh, idea in the heads of some future politicians. But it was a really good discussion. And um, I think that is it, so thank you. District 7. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, we had a great time at Vanderbilt. Um, learn more about each other, too. <laughs> um, uh, I want to congratulate Teacher of the Year Elementary, Bobby Negron, a Paramount B Paragon Mills, I'm so excited I can't even speak. Paragon Mills, my district, woohoo! I've known Bobby for a long time, and so I'm really excited um, to see her win that award. She's put so much in the community. Uh, we used to do a lot of um, community organizing way back in the day, and to see her in this part of her career and put that heart and effort into for it to be celebrated and recognized, I just wanna give a big shout out to her and a big shout out to, uh, to the Glencliffe Cluster. We're doing awesome and great things, so yay. And then also for women's sports, for any woman who's been an athlete, um, to see the women athletes, especially in NCAA and coming off the flag football, go Gamecocks, um, and, and also to the University of Iowa, but to, to see women's sports to be elevated. And for those of who've been athletes, to see what you get, the secondary effects of working a sport, working part of the team is so awesome. And to see women's um, sports to be elevated, it's so awesome. So yay. Mr. District 8. Uh, and in continuation of women's sports elevation tonight, the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team will be playing in the final of the She Believes Cup. Um, for those of you who believe and participate, uh, as my family does, in additional women's sports. So um, that's fun, too. Um, a couple of things. One, thank you to Council Member uh, Zwara, who helped um, gather all of us uh, school board members and members of the council to meet with the local youth and government group. Um, and we had students from Pearl Cone, Antioch, and McGavick, um, who all came and participated in that. Um, I think we were all there at some point during the day um, and had an opportunity to learn from our students about things that they're experiencing um, at their schools, about ideas that they have for 
um, changes that can be made both by Metro Council and by the school board. Also a great opportunity for us to sit together with council members. Um, so thank you um, to Council Member Sora for or organizing that. Um, I wanted to, uh, we had a fantastic Teacher of the Year banquet um, and congratulations to all of our Teachers of the Year and, um, and Principals of the Year, but also wanted to shout out um, a support employee of the year, um, Lisa Griegel, who is the bookkeeper at JT Moore, um, was one of just two uh, school level um, support employees who were named support employee of the year. And so I know there are three total, but school level, right? We had one district level and two school levels. So just an extra shout out to my friend uh, at JT Moore, who does a fantastic job. Um, and I had one other thing that I just forgot about, but that's okay. So I'll let it go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. District 9. Um, so uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Gleason, who is the principal at Harpeth Valley Elementary, was just elected vice president of the National Association of Elementary School Principals. So she will be, and that was an elected position, so that's a really big deal, and we're extremely proud of her, and um, knowing that her voice is going to be out there representing elementary school principals is really special. So we're really, really proud of you, Dr. Gleason. Um, also, this week is National Library Week, and I am extremely thankful for all the libraries and all of our schools and their librarians. And finally, tomorrow is our last day for our food drive. Um, you may bring in any canned or non-perishable food items. Every single MMPS school has a uh, box for second harvest in the front of their schools that you can just drop that off. There will be a prize for the school that has gathered the most items. So I'm really excited to see how that shakes out at the end. So thank you. Remembered my other thing. Yes, ma'am. I remember that my other thing was to say thank you to um, Dr. Battle and team and all of the staff for allowing our students to have some really cool uh, participation yesterday in the eclipse. Um, although I think it wasn't all. Uh, nature didn't participate exactly as we all might have hoped. Um, <laughs> As my children said, it was still really cool to be doing, to be observing the eclipse. It was really cool to be doing it with all of their friends and kids in school. I saw some excellent participation um, at the schools in my area and was just, um, it, it's such a neat thing to be able to do together. So thank you. I know it's not easy to get an entire school of students out of a school onto uh, a playground or some other space and then back in and all at the same time and all of those things. And thank you to whomever I, I'm sure somebody knows, gave us all of the glasses, et cetera. Um, but really a cool thing for us to have done. Um, so thank you. It's my understanding we did have to purchase those glasses. <laughs> thank you for purchasing the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> we do appreciate the glasses, as do the children and their parents, for sure. Uh, so it's not a sure. shoebox with a hole in it. Chair sure, Roy, can I share just one um, cool thing? Um, I had the very distinct honor and pleasure today to participate in a web webinar with um, the researchers from the Education Recovery uh, Report Card, um, Tom Kane and Sean Reardon. Um, it was an amazing opportunity to hear directly from the researchers, both from Harvard and Stanford University, um, as well as superintendents from a few other districts who are also leading just phenomenal work um, in their districts. Um, but I just wanted to take an opportunity, uh, Mr. Adam Shute, who is also the Assistant Secretary of um, Elementary Education um, with the U.S. Department of Education also participated, but just wanted to um, share that that was just a phenomenal opportunity to uh, represent uh, Metro National Public Schools and to share um, all the great work um, that's happening within the district, but most importantly, to celebrate our young people um, who are just doing magnificent things and just are growing and learning um, every day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gets to me last. So um, we have, of course, our newest board member, TK Fain, and we also have potential uh, upcoming board member, Zach Young, inside the office. He's un he's unopposed, but <laughs> still not official, Zach. But we do appreciate you being here. Um, and so, while I have 
while I have everybody plus extra uh, <laughs> in attendance. Um, I want to remind everybody the importance of us all checking our emails and other things. There's so much information, particularly here at the last of the school year. There's so much information that's coming across, whether it's about testing or individual things. So to that point, uh, to make sure that we're all aware of it, some things that we've been looking forward to, but I want to make sure are on our calendars, is MMPS signing day is May 4th. The peer symposium, which was just kind of briefly touched on by Dr. Battle, is May 8th. And student board member interviews are May 23rd. Um, member Mays, who is owning that, uh, sent that out to us as board members and asked for us to please uh, respond with our availability so that we can be involved in that experience. Additionally, we are here at the end of session, legislative session. And that means we are really kind of hitting a a highlight reel of what I consider are bad ideas, considering arming teachers and vouchers and the right of first refusal for buildings um, and school-owned buildings within charter schools. It will be wild these last two weeks, and I know for us as board members, we try to stay on top of it and stay informed. I encourage us to, of course, still do that. A great way that we've been able to do that is through David Brom's recent emails and his weekly updates. Of course, we have our class and other resources. But I really want to make sure for us as members that we're staying involved and just trying to know what's coming up to us. That is hard to do because it happens at a, a fast pace and sometimes with honestly not wanting us to know until it's time to vote on it. Um, but today, of course, it passed the Senate on arming teachers. And so we have many things to be considered of when we talk about the state. That said, we are all in charge of our own emotions and our own responses to things. And so I want to make sure that we are clear with each other and, of course, the public that as we discuss difficult topics or as we have problems with each other or otherwise, that we force those heads on, that we have those conversations. We try to do those as we are um, colleagues to each other and that we try to meet those with general care with each other and of course our one employee and the work that we have to do at the state. So I ask that we continue to stay involved of what's coming up as we hit testing and end of year. I ask that we try to manage our many, many different calendars. Y'all, my calendar colors are out of control right now on Google, so I know that we're all probably missing stuff. And that we all give each other some grace and that we work with each other as colleagues with respect to each other on issues that we may have and also within our own staff. I appreciate again that public participation was brought up. I know that that was a difficult topic and something that has been needed to be amended many times. To my newest or potential newest board members, we are all deputized with a great power of being able to change policies and all of us have that power and I encourage it greatly. Keep in mind that there's no limit to that. And so I appreciate governance um, chair Emily Masters for taking that on and managing it. I know there's a ton of feedback that was received because sometimes those topics are really difficult or they're in response to the state. So I appreciate that work. Thank you for letting us have that discussion. I would love to tell you that we could have those discussions and mesh that out before we get up here on the board floor and waste potentially everybody's time having to hear it all. But that's the only way we're able to have de debate. And it's for everybody's transparency and good sakes of just good debate. So I appreciate it. Thank you for your time this evening. I hope you enjoyed this short meeting and maybe you can go have dinner. Who knows? So thank you so much. Without any further business, this meeting is adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.